Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Before we get started today, I want to ask you something. Are you looking for the missing piece of the puzzle to grow your business? Well, I want to invite you to watch my free online training on how I went from hobbyist to celebrity wedding planner and how you can do it too. You will discover the puzzle pieces that will absolutely transform your business from hobbyist to like, hell yeah, I can do this full time. On puzzle piece one, I'm going to go all into personality. Puzzle piece two, how to keep the high quality clients happy. Puzzle piece three, I'm going to talk about what separates the good from the great. On four best kept secrets to profitability and all about implementing the strategies. And five, if you're going to attract the best, come on, people, you got to be the best. And then I'm going to show you how to create the magic and put it all together for you and your clients. So don't wait another minute. Go on over to go.angelaprofit.com. That's G O dot Angela Profit, two F's and two T's dot com and watch my free videos and download my free workbooks that will take your business to the next level. Hi y'all, it's Angela Profit. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Weddings Unveiled. Today I am super excited to talk with Veronica Silver. She is the president of Pawfect. Not perfect, but Pawfect for you. And if you love puppies and dogs, like half of my clients do, you will want to tune in and listen to this because this is something that is very near and dear to my heart. If you follow me on any of my social media platforms, you will see Lily and Pepe often in tow with me, my little children slash puppies. And I feel like a lot of my clients have babies and puppies and dogs and they cannot imagine ever starting their life together or having a wedding without their dog there. So Veronica is here to share with us how to make sure if you need or want to make that happen for you or your client, she's going to share some insight all about pets. I'm super excited. Hi, Veronica. How are you? Good, Angela. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited about this. Of course. And you have one dog, is that right? Or one yep. baby? I do. And he is sitting right behind me with his ears perked up. His name is Jake Bear. He's Aww. a German Shepherd Corgi. <laughs> so is that it? He's a big dog? No, he's uh, about 23 pounds. <laughs> okay. So I guess I hear German Shepherd and I just think like huge. Um, yeah. But that's awesome. And so how old is your dog? He turned six in September, we think. Um, okay. He's a rescue. Oh, Lily and Pepe, they have a birthday coming up this year. They're going to be 10. Oh, and wow. it's crazy because they still act and look like they're little bitty puppies. Um, but I would like to say they're well trained, <laughs> and, um, you know, with their age. So anyway, for our listeners who don't know what your company does. Um, I'm sure those of you who have dogs or if you have clients who have wanted to have their dog be part of their wedding or there for your pictures, or if you've worked with venues who say no pets, um, mm -hmm. again, you want to listen to this. So first off, before we dive into the tips all about this is tell us about your background. <laughs> so my background actually has nothing to do with my company. <laughs> like most of us probably on this podcast. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. Um, so I am actually an engineer by uh, degree. I've been working as a project manager for the last 13 years. So that project management background I think really has helped uh, me 
uh, with the business in terms of planning and um, you know helping out clients develop timelines, figuring out you know how to navigate different venues, different scenarios. So um, that's pretty much it. I work as a as a project manager for the state right now. That's amazing. And what state are you in currently? I'm currently in New York. Okay. Um, and then we have operations uh, pretty much through the Northeast. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. It's funny. A lot of people like my whole intro was like psychology and healthcare, which flowed right over into exactly what I needed to be doing. (laughs) So it all worked out really well, but I know that there's more to the story about this. So how (laughs) did you exactly get into like weddings and events, like through engineering or through the love of pets? Like share with us how that happened. How has this company Poffert to come all, like, how did you start it? <laughs> Good question. Um, so back in about 2015, my husband and I got engaged. Um, and at the time it was like, there's no question. Jake has to be at the wedding. And then uh, I remember laying in bed one night, it was probably December-ish and I started Googling wedding day pet care and nothing came up. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. I mean, we're in one of the bi- biggest wedding markets uh, in the U.S. How is there nothing here? So I kept Googling different phrases, nothing came up. And then I started asking some friends um, and it became like, oh, I know it's a real headache, um, but I'm sure you can figure it out. I'm like, this is stupid. I should just start a company. (laughs) So in the middle of planning my own wedding, I started the company. My husband thought I was crazy. Um, Pretty sure he still thinks I'm crazy, but. (laughs) (laughs) All of us entrepreneurs are a little bit crazy in a good way. Yep. Um, So I started the company and. Um, my very green self thought, okay, I'll start a website and they will flock. <laughs> they do not flock. <laughs> Build it and they will come, but you got to yeah. tell people about it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So uh, I started to do a little bit of marketing. And actually last year, uh, middle of 2017, I, know, I can't believe it was so long ago, um, I was at a wedding in Tarrytown, New York, so like Westchester County. And uh, one of the bridesmaids came up to me and said, you know, I really love what you do. I'm so excited the dog can be here, especially for the couple. They absolutely love Arrow. By the way, I'm the executive producer of Brides.com, and I want to do a feature on you. <laughs> so, That's amazing. Yeah, that really put us on the map. At that point, I started to expand, and it really um, – it wasn't a hobby. It really is a part-time job now. Um, so during the day, I work for the state, and then um, in the evenings, I come home, and I work on the business. I do my client calls um, and things like that. Yep. That's amazing. And so how has, how have you, because I know working for the state, you know, it's like one way and Mm -hmm. then starting your own business, how has that helped you grow? Like just as a person? Um, yes, that's an interesting question. It really, you know, day by day, week by week, I, I learn different, um, avenues of, things I never thought to consider, you know, um, trying a new accounting method called profit first. So I'm learning so much and I'm also learning, um, you know, how to take care of myself, which is an an interesting topic in and of itself. But I find, I'm sure you go through this yourself as an entrepreneur and I'm sure a lot of listeners go through this, you know, you get into this rut of, you know, that constant back and forth work with the, uh, if you do have a um, full-time job still, you know, it's a, it's a lot of work. You really need to step back and take some time um, and take care of yourself. So I'm learning that aspect of things as I go through this uh, journey. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Like probably yeah, I feel like I live like split lives for <laughs> almost <laughs> years. And then when I like dove in, I mean, I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a strategy. I didn't have a business plan. I didn't know jack shit about business. Mm -hmm. And um, this is way before it was like the thing to understand branding and understand social media didn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. So things are very different now. Um, You know, I, I still am thankful for the way that it all started out. But I feel like nowadays for newer businesses, if you really surround yourself with the right people and you have a strategy to share content and share social media and share these things, um, it can be very powerful very quickly. So, I I mean, for you, I know this is a little bit off. We haven't really touched on this, but like for you, how do you feel like social media has been a huge influence to get getting 
you out there or do you still think it's more like relationship based word of mouth or a little bit of both? A little bit of both. And it's so, so true what you say about um, surrounding yourself with people that um, will basically do you good. This year, I hired a business coach um, working with Candace Coppola, and that has been transformational. Like you, when I got into this, didn't have a business plan, no strategy. So it was kind of like, I know I need these things, but I'm not entirely sure how to go about them. Um, So Candace has been great. Uh, to work with. So highly recommend a business coach. Um, Lawyers, uh, I think for, you know, planners and uh, photographers and some other um, uh, wedding pros, it's not so, so important. But when you're handling dogs and you have the potential for dog bites and stuff like that, um, and they really are precious cargo, uh, having a a strong lawyer is good. So I had, I actually, I just hired her um, this year to help me her name is Ashley Williams. Um, so, so, so important. Um, accountants, social media. Uh, I have an intern that does most of our uh, social media handling. So definitely very important to surround your yourself with the people that um, are going to help up level your business. Um, as for marketing, definitely a mix of both. Uh, the It's interesting, actually, because we have a lot of people that are engaged on our Instagram and our Facebook Um, but I still get a, and I get a lot of people that come to the website through Google searches, um, through press releases that we've been been a part of. And I still get a lot of people that say, Oh, I was recommended by the venue. I was recommended by the photographer. I was recommended by uh, a previous client. I was just at a wedding in November. I came home and somebody had filled out the RFQ form on my website. What, who was at that wedding? (laughs) That's amazing. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, it's a kind of a mix of both. That's awesome. What uh, I feel like in terms of like what's special and unique about your service, I feel like just by saying the name, people should know (laughs) there's not a lot of people out there who actually do this. I mean, there's new apps that I notice have been coming out previously um, living in a condo, both of my dogs, you know, there's these apps where they come and walk your dog, but they they have not honed in, or maybe they just don't know the market exists, which is good for you. Mm -hmm. Um, But that these special events, like not only are they happening, I mean, I'm from Nashville, but there's so many events and weddings happening in Nashville. It's one of the largest destination cities in the United States right now. And so in terms of being special and unique, I just want our listeners to know you're just not in New York. So Mm -hmm. where what other places are, is your company located in currently and probably still growing? Oh yeah. We'll definitely expand in 2019, but but right now we're up and down the Northeast. So we service everything from like Southern Maine area, greater Boston, um, pretty much uh, half of Massachusetts, then Rhode Island, all of Connecticut. So we've got sitters in Hartford. So they kind of scatter around. Um, I'm based in New York on Long Island, I've got two sitters on Long Island, and I'll probably get two more this year just because uh, that market is very – that's a very active market for ours, and mainly mainly because it started here. So now that word of mouth is really getting out. Um, New York City, obviously. New Jersey, we have coverage. Um, Northern New Jersey, um, Middle New Jersey, Southern New Jersey. So we cover that whole state. We also cover the Hudson Valley. Um, and then we go all the way down to Baltimore, and we service into Northern Virginia. Yeah, just keep on coming south. <laughs> keep oh, yeah, on coming my way. We certainly uh, will. Um, LA is on the list as well. Seattle, awesome. West Coast. Um, yep, they're they're big cities that we see a lot of requests come through for. So we'll start to do lay the groundwork for the the expansion a little bit further south and a little bit west. <laughs> yeah. So, so as a planner, um, events, weddings, when a couple or a client they ask you know, planners listening, like if they want to bring their pet, um, what, what would you say to them? First and foremost is absolutely have a strict policy. If you're a planner that doesn't like dogs, you know, make that known. Or if you're a planner that loves dogs, put that on the website. Um, same with the photographers, same with, uh, venues, have a, a hard policy and stick to it. Um, I've met some photographers that are not dog friendly. And if that's the case, you know, when I bring the dog to the wedding, it makes it for a stressful situation. So, you know, be honest and open about that. Um, 
As for venues, I've seen a lot of venues have a hard line, you know, no. And then after I talk to them, it's like, hey, listen, look, we're professionals. Uh, we've done this at other um, other events. Happy to supply you my general liability certificate, anything along those lines. I'll even give you the timeline we develop. So going back to what was special and unique about us, it's not just pet sitting. It is actually a like mini wedding planning because we have a timeline, we have a checklist, we have to cover everything that the planners do. Um, you know, what time are we going to arrive? How are we going to get into the house if we're doing a house pickup? Um, where's the key going to be? What are they wearing? What treats are going to get their attention during pictures? What are we going to do during ceremony? Are they going to stay up at the top with the bridal party or are they going to go for a walk with us? So we have to cover all of those items. So once I start to say that, that with some venues, they get a little bit, um, more lenient with their policies. So um, for, for venues, I would certainly say if the uh, client wants their pet there, they should, uh, their policy really should be to work with a professional, um, kind of like us. Or what they could do is have one of their staff members do that type of planning that I just mentioned, um, and then hire a vet tech if we're not in those areas. Or, you know, here's another uh, shot. <laughs> we could they could have us do the, the planning piece and um, they hire a vet tech or a professional dog walker to do um, the actual service. I highly, highly recommend there's no DIY when it comes to pets and weddings. It's just, uh, you never know what can happen. Dogs are really, really like babies. As good as some of them are when they're trained, you're putting them into a whole new environment, um, which in and of itself introduces a lot of different variables. Um, so no matter how good your dog is, I highly recommend that they, um, that there is somebody that is there to take care of them. Absolutely. And I mean, just from your professional experience in this, like, are there certain parts of a wedding day that they should be present for versus just hanging out the whole day? Yep. Yep. Um, I usually find clients, of course they want the dog part of the ceremony and uh, rightfully so. It is so, so adorable to see a dog walk down the aisle. And if you have the dog uh, being walked by by uh, ring bearers or flower girls, the, the oohs and ahs are just, <laughs> there are more than uh, when the bride goes down the aisle. So uh, certainly ceremony. But uh, during ceremony, start to think about what's, how is this going to occur? Who are they going to walk down with? Um, we, Typically, we'll hand the pet off just before they go down the aisle, and then sometimes we'll scooch around uh, and take the dog. Once they've done that walk, we'll take the dog for another walk uh, so they're not interrupting the ceremony. Some dogs are very good. They stay up at the top, and it's very cute to have the you know pictures with the bridal party um, or groomsmen or bridesmaids and the dog on the side, so that makes for a cute picture. And then this is one area that I find a, a lot of clients you know don't really think about, but... Uh, recession. So when the bride and groom or groom and groom, bride and bride uh, have said their vows, w what happens to the pets then? It's really, really cute when um, the couple walks back down the aisle with the pets, but there has to be some sort of planning for that handoff. And then what do you do at the end of the aisle after they've taken their first walk uh, as a married couple? So highly, highly recommend the ceremony. It needs a, a bit of planning in those areas. Um, first look pictures, if they're doing first look, certain, certainly couples pictures, um, bridal party pictures. I've seen some couples incorporate their dogs into the cocktail hour, which is really cute as well. It's nice to have, you know, you've said your vows, you, um, and now you're kind of circling around mingling with your guests. It's nice to be able to turn around and be like, oh, you know, here's my little, my, my fur baby that you see on Facebook and social media. So, you know, that's nice to have. Um, I did have a couple, and actually I've had probably two or three uh, this year alone, um, that incorporated the dog into the bridal party introductions. <laughs> oh my God, that's so cool. I haven't had anyone do that yet. I love how they do it. They, actually one couple I can remember from last year, they had three dogs. So they, um, you know, the bridal party went out and then the DJ started playing Who Let the Dogs Out? So I came out with the three dogs. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yep, yep. Sometimes uh, I've done a couple other ones where they go out with like a bridesmaid or a groomsman or they go out with a couple. Um, so that's, that's always pretty cute. And then usually at that point, um, the dog's had enough. I would say as much as it's nice to have the dog for the reception, most venues, that's a hard line no because you have food out. So it violates the health code laws. But it's also, it's a little bit tiring. At that point, you know, the dog's kind of like, 
oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. So usually we take them home or take them back to our home or a hotel. Um, and that's pretty much the conclusion of our day. So, I mean, I've had clients before. Um, in fact, I had a new couple in my office two nights ago and they kind of got into a little bit of a spat about it because the bride's like, so our dog is coming and um, our dog has to be in it. And I know the venue says no pets, but we do have the dog um, certified with all the shot records. And I'm like, well, what do you mean certified? And she's like, well, he is a support dog slash anxiety dog. So he can travel with me and sit on my lap and he's going to be with me the entire day. And mm-hmm. then the groom's like, no, he's not. He can come for pictures and like walk in from the ceremony. And then like the dog nanny needs to take him home. And she's like, no, I want him to be there for the whole time. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, guys, guys, I know. Uh, I'm like, first off, you guys are going to be the center of attention, not your dog. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I love the ceremony. I love there for pictures, but unless you're going to be standing there with your dog the entire time, like with everything, it, it really should go like after the yeah. ceremony pictures. So how do you, how do you handle that? If people are asking you and do you, do you find that people like argue over their dog? Like they're raising a child. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't say I find that they argue a lot, but I have had a couple couples. They're like, we want the dog there for the reception. So what I say is let's do a compromise, uh, compromise. So what you could do in this case, if the, um, if the venue has a hard line, no, um, speak to the venue and say, you know, we'll have a professional, something along those lines. I have a wedding coming up in March where we'll be in the um, bridal suite the whole time. So not going to be in the reception area, not going to be around food. Um, We're going to respect the boundaries that the venue is setting for us. But, you know, as you mix and mingle with your guests, if you want to take a five minute break, because we know that happens during weddings, you know, couples get, you know, a little overwhelmed going from um, person to person and all the dishes that come out and then all the dances. So I've seen a lot of couples that they you know, take a five minute, 10 minute break, they go back to the bridal suite. And at that point, your dog's there, you know, you can come cuddle with them, you know, know they're okay, things along those lines. So that seems to be a good compromise in in those areas. Um, But for the most part, couples are on the same page. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So like for venues and Mm -hmm. tips for venues dealing, not even dealing, but like being pet friendly and how how can they let people know that? What what tips do you have? And then also, twofold question for venues that are absolutely like no pets. I mean, legally they can't do that, right? I mean, for like supporting. <laughs> so I'm just wondering. <laughs> uh, support dogs, yes. Legally, no. If your dog is truly a support dog, and don't you know fake it type of thing. Don't say you know oh I have um, PTSD so I need my dog, but it, you don't really have PTSD type of thing. Um, what if, if the dog, dog does though? <laughs> One of my true. dogs. Does. Oh yeah, I think my dog has FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so yeah, don't fake it. But if you tr- truly have a support dog, you know you have seizures, um, you need assistance walking, things like that. Then absolutely, venues can't um, cannot say uh, no, no to you. So that's a violation of ADA. If that's the case, um, I'm happy to give you some legal advice on that because mm-hmm. I've come into that before. <laughs> Yeah, please share. Uh, well, a little sidebar. My parents uh, own a condo down in Florida, so they moved, kind of moved. So they do six months in Florida, six months up in New York with us. Um, so the, the first time that they did their six-month stretch, I flew down to Florida. My dog is emotional sports uh, certified. So I flew down to Florida um, and stayed with them in their condo. I gave the condo association Jake's uh, vet records, um, gave them, you know, I forget what else, but uh, the, I think the last day, uh, the one of the condo board members came by and he was like, you can't have your dog out here. Um, you shouldn't really even have the dog on the property. I think I need to ask you to leave right now. And I'm thinking, what the hell? Mm. Like, <laughs> you know, I've been here for 10 days. You're kidding me, right? And I've been very respectful. Anytime that Jake had to go out, I went to the furthest end of the property. Um, I took him out for runs. You know, he wasn't even on the property half the time we were down there. So I, and I was just irate at that point. So I got online, I found some um, statutory laws in Florida. 
um, case laws. I wrote a scathing four page letter um, <laughs> and I sent it to the property management com company too. Well, two months later, I get a note from the, their lawyers that said, we apologize. Uh, we've made them aware of these. We've made board members aware of the situation and what policies they can have, what policies they can't have. Uh, know that the next time you come down to our building, uh, the your you and your pet are more than welcome. So, that's awesome. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Yeah, I did a little happy dance when I got that letter. You're like, don't f with me. <laughs> yeah, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, do not. <laughs> do, they, do they know your industry now, though? Like, do they understand what the heck you do? My parents? No, like the pro where they live. Um, like the property people. I'm just wondering, oh. like, did they like Google you and figure out like, oh, this girl's like <laughs> legit with her company? Uh, that's a good question. I actually don't know. I mean, everything was mailed to, to me as a person, not the company. So I don't know. I've, that's a good question though. <laughs> I mean, just from a business perspective, like opportunity, you know, going back to them and saying, Hey, we have this service. And if you have other service dogs here and I don't know if people go down there and like rent the condos and stuff for an events, but just so you know, <laughs> FYI. Mm -hmm. um, now I know that some of my couples, they like to dress their pups up like mm -hmm. for the wedding day. So what do you usually suggest for that? Uh, a couple different things. It's, and it's mostly what your dog is comfortable with. I highly also recommend you test out whatever you're going to wear ahead of time. Like don't, don't give us or don't give anybody something with tags on them type of thing because you want to make sure that the dog is comfortable, that it fits. So I've seen a couple of different outfits. We just had a December wedding um, down by the beach on the boardwalk and the dog had this cute little red suit. It was two dogs and then the girl had a, um, a little tutu. Su super cute pictures. Um, so those outfits are always cute. Bow ties, that they do quite well. Um, I've seen floral collars. Uh, just be very cognizant with the florist that your um, dog is going to be wearing this and they're going to be pulling on it. So, um, you know, don't tack on flowers, but, you know, be very strategic with um, creating some sort of collar or anything that the dog is going to be wearing that will hold up for the day. Um, obviously be cognizant of the uh, pet friendly flowers. Don't give dogs poinsettias or anything that might poison them. Um, so th those are pretty cute, but also think of the leash. This is one area I find a lot of couples don't think about. Uh, and then they'll, they'll hand us, you know, the eight year old purple uh, half chewed rope leash. And I'm like, well, that doesn't look <laughs> appropriate mm -hmm. in pictures. So usually what I recommend is a flat black one inch, uh, six foot long, leash none of the retractable leashes because that little retractor thing doesn't doesn't look right no poop bags on the leash um but something that's poop gonna bags. <laughs> no poop bags go in the pockets <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah. but also um consider um not that just the attire that's a big piece but when you're planning to have your pet at the wedding all the other aspects uh professional company like ours we typically bring uh, slobber rags, you know, that kind of cleans up the dog's muzzle if there's any slobber, things like that, or if there's any of those eye googies. <laughs> um, we bring, I always have an extra leash just in case, you never know, obviously poop bags, water, a water bowl. We have one of my sitters um, over in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia, that uh, she, her her wedding, she had her dog, she did eye-wide it, but she's uh, she said the dogs got to the venue and all of a sudden it was like, oh my God, they need water. So they ended up um, giving the dogs water out of champagne flutes. <laughs> so, That's um, kind of cute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it was cute, but it's also like, oh, my God, we should have thought of this. <laughs> right. Yeah. And if you don't travel with your dog on a normal basis, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you just, you just kind of scoop it up and take it with you. And then it's like, oh, crap, what about treats? And what about this? Mm -hmm. And what about that? Um, wh which is just, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, people, I'm like, how would you leave your baby's bottle at home and like the diapers at home? I know people who have real kids. My sister thinks I'm crazy. She's like, you don't understand. Like, it's not like having kids. I'm like, right. They don't talk back. 
and like they're always <laughs> I know <laughs> and they don't, they don't throw temper tantrums right and they don't throw up and like just on a regular basis yep. <laughs> I'm like yeah I'm not, that, mm-hmm. they, they are my kids um so clearly like what would you say if for your clients um you know I see it as planners being your client for their clients and then brides that and grooms or couples that contact you directly like what's some of the feedback and just things that they absolutely love about what you guys are doing I think one of my favorite things that the client say about us is that we're always there when uh, we need to be so I had one client write me this you know nice little email a Google review that she was like we turned around and when we thought um, the dog should be here you were there you know it was just We expected you. And that's really a product of the timeline that we developed. So we knew when we were going into pictures. We knew when we were doing the first look. We knew when we were doing uh, bridal party pictures. So it was easy to do that. Um, So that's nice. That was always nice to hear. And there's uh, a lot of the feedback is around the planning and development. You know, there's a, like I always say, there's there's a lot that goes into that piece. Um, And that's really how we can execute so well. Yeah. The other thing I'll say and and mention, you were talking about the leash and, um, you know, being from the South and monograms are really big and me being into a marketing guru and like branding guru, (laughs) a lot of my clients, like they want a customized leash, like with the dog's Mm -hmm. name on it or like with their monogram and their wedding date on it. Have you seen people, I don't know if that's just like a Southern thing or have you seen that? (laughs) Uh, I haven't, I've, I have to think about that one. I've seen a lot of leashes that match the bow tie or match the attire. You know, there's a lot of cute things on Etsy where you get the, you know, cute leash or the cute collar or cute harness and that matches the leash. I don't know that we've had any monograms, but I'm sure that's a, that, that would be cute. Um, definitely cute. Yeah. It, it, I, again, I think it's just something that It's like, you know, you get a customized little tag for Mm -hmm. your dog with the collar and um, something that just goes along with it. It just seems like, especially for branding it out, you know, like with a monogram everywhere. Um, But so while everything, you know, seems great, you guys come in, you take care of it, you help clients, like, are you still facing challenges like within this industry? Uh, Yes, I would certainly say that. I mentioned a couple of them earlier, like photographers that aren't pet friendly. You know, you show up and the photographer is almost scared. So it just makes for a stressful situation. And that I'm not even sure how to to mitigate. Um, But that would only happen once. Um, Some venues that say, we don't want you here. There was one uh, wedding that we did a couple weeks ago, actually, actually, the client said, and we put the onus on the client to check with the venues. That's in our contract. Um, and it's just one of those things, it's too hard for us to go and check off with a whole, you know, the thousands of venues that are across the U.S. So we put that onus on the client. And um, <clears throat> I showed up at one venue and um, you could tell the staff was a little bit uneasy about uh, the dog being there. And I'm like, the client told me specifically, like it's on the timeline that he knew the owner, that they were going to. Uh, be fine with a dog there and the whole time I had the like mater d on the microphone Mm -hmm. behind me saying when are you gonna leave when are you gonna leave (laughs) so oh my gosh yeah I'm like calm down like I'm only here for a half an hour just doing pictures type of thing (laughs) um (sighs) yeah some other challenges are really the challenges we all face uh when couples don't adhere to the timeline um when guests have arguments uh, aside from that, you know, it's fairly unchallenging. I have been bit before. <laughs> I'm glad I was bit as opposed to any of my sitters. So now we have a policy around that. Just a small bite on my hand. Um, so th- there's obviously in the inherent danger of having a dog that is not well behaved. So we have a bit of an intake process when we bring clients in to uh, understand their dog's behavior. And also the lawyer now is writing a little bit more into the contract about dog behaviors. And if, if it ends up being that the dog is not well behaved, doesn't end up, you know, um, doing well around guests, uh, the contract that we're now writing for 2019 is going to say we have the right to um, basically uh, revoke the timeline and bring the pet somewhere that uh, we feel is appropriate. That's a good thing to write into your contract. Like, yeah. I mean, 
have you had people where um, they they're like, oh, my dog's perfect and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then it's like, no, your dog is not perfect. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We've had a couple of those. Um, it, not too, too terrible. We did have one where we really had to completely abandon the job because um, mm. the dog did not do well with um, – he was just nipping at my sitter and thank God he had pants on. <laughs> oh my um, but he nipped at some venue members, nipped at the photographer, was nipping at kids. Um, it's just not a very good situation to have a dog in. Of course, the couple was not happy with us at all. Um, so that was a bit of a, a negative situation, but you know, it happens. Um, it's going to happen. I'm sure down the road, uh, we've had a couple couples that say, yeah, the dog is great where they're just pulling and pulling and pulling on the leash. So at the end of the day, it's like, oh my God, I just got a full workout from this. Right. Um, but uh, aside from that, they are pretty good. Like I said, um, you're inherently taking the dog out of its natural environment into a place that they've never been before, new sights, new sounds, um, new smells, things like that. So two, three, four hours in, they are exhausted. I can't tell you how many dogs pass flat out in the back of my car as soon as I put them in uh, when I'm driving them home. And then I get messages the next day like, oh, my God, you wore the dog out. <laughs> so, um, Do yeah. you have people that after you leave the ceremony with the dog that they say, can you just keep it while I'm on my honeymoon or can it just spend the night with you? Like, do you get that? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. We, we get that a lot. Um, and actually we've had a couple clients that they love us so much that they're like, can we always leave the dog with you? So I've had a couple of repeat clients this past year that got married in 2016 or 2017. Um, but yeah, we, we do do that. Um, we do, uh, in home sits and we also do like the, in the sitters home. So whichever the couple, uh, prefers. And sometimes we actually even do, do the sits in the hotel room. So we'll sit with the dog, uh, until the couple comes back. That is amazing. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yep. Do you so if if someone leaves the dog, you know, with you guys, like talk me through that process. Like, do you have a preference form that people fill out so you know like their schedule and if they have special food? Like what how do you guys take mm -hmm. all of that information down? Sure. We have a details form that's now going to go on our website. Uh, it was a PDF before. It's going to go on our new website uh, through a Wufu form, but it is a, a very detailed form right down to uh, what's your pet's Instagram. <laughs> but we ask all the questions. We also collect information about the wedding. So we want, we want to know who the planner is. We want to know who the photographer is. Um, obviously, don't need to know who the DJ is, but uh, those are important details uh, so that when we do our social media posting, we can take tag appropriately. Um, but yep, we collect all the information about pet behavior, food, treats. Uh, we also do a final coordination call three weeks before the wedding. And during that call, we talk through all of those items. Um, any medications, we have have no issues with medications. Actually, one of our clients from it was earlier this year uh, in May has some sort of blood disorder, so required us to bring him to the vet every two days for a shot. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. Nice little guy, poor little guy, you know, but uh, we do that, um, but we always coordinate that on that finals coordination call, um, and then we double check what obviously they've put into that form. One thing we also cover too is treats. This is a little bit of a gray area because I'm sure you know, you, you give your dog one of those training treats or, you know, one of those biscuits. It's kind of like, eh, thanks mom. I appreciate this, but I'm going to go bury this in the couch right now and I'm not going to do my tricks because I really don't like that treat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but if you pull chicken or cheese, um, I have walked around venues with prosciutto in my pocket <laughs> and, but it works, you know, and that's important too because you don't want to run, run into when you're doing photography. Um, and you've scheduled, you know, half an hour for bridal pictures where, um, the photographer has taken 200 frames and the dog's not looking or the dog's not behaving. Usually what we do is, you know, when I have prosciutto in my pocket, I just stand around the photographer's lens, hold it in my hand, um, uh, and the dog typically looks. So our pictures are actually come out pretty good. So when I, when it comes to, uh, packing for the day, and those discussions about what treats and what food they ha have, I give that example. So I say, what motivates your dog best? 
Gotcha. That's awesome. What are your thoughts on like, so if you have to put a dog in the car and like take it to the vet, what are your thoughts on like the, the car seats and the seat belts and how, how do you approach that? <laughs> Interesting question too. Cause when that bride's video came out, I got somebody write a scathing uh, review on my knot and wedding wire profiles that I wasn't transporting dogs correctly, that they should be in crates. And I'm like, <laughs> you have never even worked with you. Um, so thankfully that got taken down, but um, it's really whatever the couple's preference is. If the dog, if the dog's comfortable in a crate, great. But I know my own dog as a rescue, God only knows what he does or, you know, what went through for the first year of his life. He does not do well in a crate. I would never put him in a crate in my car, um, but they're always seat belted. Our insurance, our insurance policy mandates that they must be uh, restrained in some way. So I, uh, all of our sitters have some sort of uh, belt that, uh, clips into one of the um, seatbelt harnesses and then the other end clips on to either their harness or to their neck collar. And that does pretty good because a lot of times dogs want to come up to the front and, you know, lick the driver, sit in the driver's seat. That's a no-no. <laughs> right. um, and if there's any particular harness, you know, sometimes we've had a special um, harness that's meant for the seatbelt to go through. We can work with that as well too. That's amazing. Like I bought my dogs, like the, it, it's like for two little dogs and it's almost like a booster seat slash car seat. <laughs> yeah. You, yep. like, the bucket. Their, yeah. You like put their har- little harness on. Like I don't have collars for my dogs because they're so little. If I had to like yank them up, it would like choke them to death. So I like oh. have a full little body harness and then it like clips into the back of the car seat and then you like, you know, put the seatbelt on the car seat. And so they're so like used to sitting in my lap, which is not good. Mm-hmm. And so trying to train them, it's like they expect to be in the front seat. I'm like, no, mommy's going to put you in the back seat. And <laughs> yep. it's just like if I could just start over, mm-hmm. like, and ha- you know, when I was training them as a puppy, I'm just like, gosh, I should have started this not when they were eight, but, you know, <laughs> when they're new and then they come to expect it. Mm-hmm. So yep. that's just <laughs> something I learned. What's like your craziest story like to date? Like with a dog parent or a pet or just something that was just like, oh, I didn't see that coming. Um, hmm. Well, I mean, we've had the uh, that the one negative experience I mentioned where we had a pretty much abandoned the job. But um, I guess my favorite positive story, <laughs> a fun story, is the, the bride's the bride story. I never ever ever expected to um you know get this big feature there was 2.8 million view uh views on the video that they put up on uh, the bride's uh facebook the brides.com facebook page and it was just like it really blew up um so that was so so exciting um and something i never (laughs) never anticipated um but aside from that, you know, one thing I absolutely love, this happened about two weeks ago. I was part of the fir- couple's first look. So it's so nice to be part of that special moment mm-hmm. um, and, par- you know, part and partial to the vows and um, the ceremony. And the looks on their face when I show up with the dogs or when my sitters show up with their dogs are priceless. You know, it absolutely just makes the day for them. So that's, those are my favorite parts. I love it. I love it. Well, for our listeners, if they want to hire you or learn more, or if they are in a city where you're not servicing or you're hiring, like where should they go? What should they do? Certainly check out the website. Um, Got a lot of information up. Uh, We're going to be changing the website soon. So so stay tuned for the new website that should launch somewhere February, March-ish. so that will have a little resource library. It's really our blog, but um, good articles in there uh, for things that we've talked about, you know, leashes, um, what they should bring, uh, how they should go down the aisle, et cetera, et cetera. So certainly check out the website. Our Instagram is super cute. Um, my social media intern does a phenomenal job with some of the captions. Um, and then if you have any more questions, absolutely call, email, text. I'm happy to respond to texts, just not at 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> no boundaries, people boundaries. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, but absolutely reach out uh, any of those ways. We love, love, love chatting about this topic. So um, if we're um, not in your city, absolutely reach out. Well, we can help develop a timeline for you. 
Um, we have a package that we do that. It's kind of our budget friendly package where we do that hour planning session um, and we collect up the information through that details form I mentioned earlier. So we can do that planning piece if they want to hire like a vet tech or a professional dog walker, um, but they just need to instruct the dog walker what to do. And any questions at all, policy making, contracts, things like that, happy to answer them. Uh, email, phone are probably best. Awesome. I absolutely love your business. <laughs> and um, something else that I ab absolutely just love about you is um, I was in, I was working at Wedding MBA recently and, you know, you came over and we struck up a conversation. It really wasn't so much about the dogs and things like that, but it was about like business and you really do your research and you really look around for like, who is the best and how can I learn how to do this? And yes, yep. I'm in this other profession, but like, I'm going to hire good people and not just good people, but like people who know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that about you, about the business aspect, because so many people, again, they pick it up as a hobby and then they they're working so hard like nine to five and then they come home and then they work on their business mm -hmm. and so really focusing and I could tell how focused you were like making sure the business part was set up right mm -hmm. and so do you ever feel yourself or I mean you may not even know at this point but do you feel like this is something where this is like long term where okay I'm gonna go brand this and expand all over the world kind of thing or you haven't gotten there yet? <laughs> um, no, absolutely. I have, um, sorry, I have uh, visions of being in all four corners of the U.S. <laughs> That's our mission statement for 2019. Um, but I do uh, have plans to expand, um, I'm sorry, to, to different cities. So yes, I want to expand. Uh, internationally gets a little tricky. Australia has um, ironically, a lot of companies there already in Melbourne and Sydney. So I don't know how successful we would do in a saturated market. England has a few. Ireland has a few. Canada doesn't really have any. Um, but it would certainly it poses an interesting business. I guess you could say headache because now you're getting into international laws, contract laws, um, <laughs> and things like that. So certainly a blip on the radar, but not something I. Uh, would pursue internationally uh, uh, anytime soon. Not yet. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, so I know you mentioned a new website, but is it still going to be paw, P-A-W-F-E-C-T-F-O-R-Y-O-U.com? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure so that our listeners can find you wherever you are going. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Thank you so much for all of your tips and your insight and for your time today. Mm -hmm. and um, thank you for having me. I mean, this is so much fun. You're so welcome. So guys, be sure that you check out Veronica's company, especially if you are a planner or if you're a brat or a groom or a couple listening and you want to incorporate your animal, your puppy, your dog, um, Veronica, I'm pretty sure she can make it happen. So <laughs> check it out. And thank you so much for listening to another episode on Weddings Unveiled. Have a great day. Be sure to tune in to next week. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends. And I'm so very grateful if you will leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. Also, be sure that you're a part of my email list, and if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.